In today's show, we're looking ahead to Thursday's action in the NBA. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today, we're looking ahead to Thursday's action in the league. Let's get stuck into it straight away. The first game we look at, the Bulls and the Hornets. It does look like Nikola Vucevic. It's Vucevic. It's Big him. Vucevic. And the skater boy, Zach Levine. It does look like they are going to return to action for this game. They're both listed as probable. So what does that mean for Daniel Tice? Do they continue to start Tice? His minutes have been up starting at center next to Thad Young the last couple of games. But he'll probably go back to 25 minutes a night. And yeah, value drops off. But given it is a low volume slate, maybe Tice still can remain valuable. Maybe Thad Young can still remain valuable for a 12-teamer just for this Thursday. And if Levine is back, does that mean Kobe White goes to the bench? Do they keep White and Levine together? Do they try Sadoransky back there? There are a lot of questions. And how does Levine look? How's he going to be coming back from COVID? What's his minutes limit going to be? Like, I think we have to be prepared for a not a great game from Levine and maybe some limited minutes. For the Hornets, PJ Washington Jr. is going to return. But Cody Martin's out. Jay, uh, we'll talk to Jalen McDaniels in a second. Cody Martin is out. Miles Bridges is out. Gordon Haywood is out. So McDaniels probably does get that opportunity to start and play 30 plus minutes. I don't know whether Caleb Martin will. They could go with Martin, McDaniels, and Washington, or they could start Washington and Biombo in that front court, and that would limit one of McDaniels or Martin. But I want to see how that shakes out between McDaniels, between Caleb Martin, and who can be valuable there. I would prefer McDaniels to Martin, but I think both can be at least 12-team league streams, especially when we find out what the starting lineup actually is. The Wizards and the Raptors. The Aquaman, Anthony Gill, he started on Wednesday. Whether he continues to do that in this game with Rui Hachimura out is still up in the air. Of course, Scott Brooks and rotations are really not anything that we can uh, have any sort of um, consistency in. So what do we do with Gill? Is he at least a streaming option? Probably not, but there's a chance for him to start. Well, Russ Westbrook, I just want to watch him because he's been playing at a super high level. So let's just see what he's doing. Let's hope that we can maintain a level of efficiency, which has been there for the last few and uh, appreciate what he's doing. For the Raptors, OG Ananobi was initially listed as out. He's now doubtful. Gary Trent could be returning. So, and Kyle Lowry looks like he's back. So how do they play that front court with Ken Birch and Yuta Watanabe? We know Boucher is out. So Birch has been pretty underwhelming this week in the games that he's played. So how does he look? Um, how does Watanabe look? Watanabe started last game for Lowry, which I don't think obviously is going to be the case now with Kyle back. So what does their role look like in this matchup? The Nets and the Mavs, Landry Shamet. It's getting solid enough minutes, but realistically, he's just not a very good fantasy player. You can stream him for points and threes, but let's see how he and Bruce Brown coexist. And then also Blake Griffin, and that ties into the minutes of DeAndre Jordan. It ties into the minutes of um, Nick Claxton there as well. So just seeing how these guys are, are going to work in that um, in that setup and how the minutes are going to play out between Griffin, Jordan, Green, and, uh, and Nicky Claxton. For the Mavs, I want to watch Josh Green because I thought he played really well in the last game. He replaced Josh Richardson in the starting lineup after halftime, and Rick Carlisle went out of his way. And this is not a Scott Brooks, where I'm going to go out of my way to praise someone and play them four minutes the next game. He went out of his way to say, I think the game turned around when Josh Green was in the lineup. Does that mean that Green's going to play in this one? Remember that Kleber and Porzingis are both out. Um, do they replace Richardson with Green? Do they put you know, Hardaway in there? Like, how are they going to run this um, this lineup with those absences? And can Green have any sort of impact? Probably not. Do they start Dwight Powell? Do they start Willie Cauley-Stein? Last game, it was Cauley-Stein, but Powell got the bulk of the minutes. In fact, Powell's got more minutes than Cauley-Stein in each of the last two, but we just don't know how that's going to run. Dwight can be an interesting field goal percentage guy and, uh, and rebound sort of player. The next game we take a look at, We've got the Hawks and the Pacers are back-to-back -back for both of these teams. I'm always interested to see how the Hawks utilize John Collins, what his minutes look like, can he stay out of foul trouble, what his usage looks like. And this game is going to be absolutely no different. 
I also want to watch Trey Young, who, since he returned from his ankle injury, amazingly, as quickly as he, as he did, um, has been really good. So what is he able to do? How do they run that rotation with Kevin Herter and Lou Williams and Brandon Goodwin, who's probably out of the rotation, to be fair, on this back-to-back? While for the Pacers, Aaron Holiday got the start with Malcolm Brogdon out. I do not expect Brogdon to play in this game on Thursday. So Holiday can be a streamer. And then with Goga Badadze back, how's O'Shea Brissett going to look? I think Brissett's still going to remain starting. He did on, on, thir- on Wednesday. But will he continue to do that and what his minutes look like on Thursday? The Grizzlies and the Pistons. Jaron Jackson should return after resting on uh, Wednesday, so he should be back there. I don't think he's going to start, but can he actually be good? Because he hasn't been for most of these games since he returned. And then also Dylan Brooksy Brooks, who's been putting up some pretty good numbers. He still will have that occasional you know, 15 points on 20 shots type of game, but he's playing some pretty good defense and occasionally puts up some interesting numbers. And, and Grayson Allen uh, had to leave Wednesday's game, so more opportunities could arise there for Brooks. For the Pistons, it's all about the depressed penis Sadiq Bay, who was horrendous in the last game, but excellent in the games prior to that. He's going to start. He's going to get a lot of minutes, especially with guys like Grant and Allington and Joseph. And um, I'm sure there's someone else that I'm missing. Plumley out once again. Um, and then Killian Hayes, who's been cleared for back-to-backs. He'll start again at point guard. Whether they And remember, there's no Diallo or Josh Jackson in this game for Detroit. So Hayes and Frank Jackson are going to have to play a ton of minutes. So let's see if Killian can do something good offensively outside of assists, which have been pretty strong from him. The Thunder and the Warriors. Gabrielle Deck. I could barely recognize my own dick. Um, with the absence of Alexei Pokyashevsky, Deck has been in the rotation the last three games, so about 20 minutes a night, putting up some pretty good numbers. Now, uh, the Thunder rotation is impossible to predict because some games Kenrich Williams will be in, some games he's out. Tony Bradley's in, he's out. Ty Jerome's in, he's out. Like These guys are all over the place, but they've been consistently giving minutes to Dick. I don't know why I use my New Zealand accent, but it's funny. Um, so Dick has been getting lots of... Uh, Lots, oh, I can't do it. I can't, I can't do it. Uh, Deck has been getting lots of uh, solid performances and you know, enough to consider him, at least in 14-team leagues, a stream for Thursday. Tone Bradley, will he play? I have no idea. But I think with Isaiah Roby having to start at the four, there are those minutes there for Brown and Bradley to almost exclusively take all of the 48 center minutes. So he could be an interesting option. The Warriors, they'll be without... Um, Damian Lee again, so Kent Bazemore will start. Kelly Oubre is out again, once, uh, of course. So Bazemore, who was terrible in their last game, gets another opportunity to, uh, to provide value. But I also want to watch Andy Wiggins, who's been playing at a really high level. Now, he can be inconsistent in-game, but his overall production has been pretty strong. Defensive stats, scoring well, relatively efficient, and let's see if he can keep that up. But I've been impressed over the last couple of weeks with Andy Wiggins. The Lakers and the Clippers. No Schroeder, no LeBron James, so Alex Caruso will get another start. He was okay in that last game, and there's also the chance that Taylor Horton Tucker doesn't play. So we could get a lot of Alex Caruso minutes. He's at least a valuable streamer. While Andre Drummond, what are we going to um what are we gonna do with uh, with Drummond? Because look, let's be honest, he's been pretty poor. He's outplayed by Marcus Gasol pretty clearly. Does Frank Vogel go to the three-center rotation? Or does Drummond push back to 27 minutes? I'm not sure. I want to watch how that plays out. Well, for the Clippers, the Pat Beverly, Reggie Jackson, Rajon Rondo trio at point guard. Beverly returned, came off the bench, and Jackson still played 31 minutes. They played together some in this one too. So how does that uh, dynamic shake out? Category league streamers, Jalen McDaniels, Killian Hayes, Jordan Poole, DeAnthony Melton. I had Grayson Allen there, but just as I recorded this, he got ruled out. So I don't think he's going to play in that game. So you can ignore him. While for points leagues, we're looking at Lou Dort, who is questionable, by the way. Kent Bazemore, Kem Birch, Jalen McDaniels, and Frank Jackson. Guys, that'll do it for me today. Don't forget on the way out, hit the thumbs up, drop the likes, drop your comments, um, and follow this podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on Odyssey. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya. See ya.